Rolling out of an action-packed dream, Kendo Ada takes a spill off the couch and lets out a painful groan. Just in the nick of time, his longtime friend Shua appears at the front door. Ada opens the door to find Shua beaming, announcing that it's shopping time. Ada, however, quickly puts the brakes on that idea real quick, telling her he is not gonna be her shopping buddy. Shua puts on a pout but promises she's not going to stock up on junk food. Hearing that, Ida caves and gives her a countdown of 30 seconds to get herself ready. Once at the supermarket, the two friends dive straight into grocery shopping. It is during this moment Shua points out the changes in Ida, mentioning his single-minded focus on studying even though he's the top student in their class. In response, Ida gently reminds Chua that she's already familiar with his aspirations and the sacrifices he must make to achieve them. With that being said, Ida goes to grab veggies for the meal, making Chua grumble in displeasure. Back home, after their shopping adventure, Chua kicks off a mini protest about having veggies for dinner. She lets out a string of complaints, even casually berating Ida for being a closed-in perv. Ida, busy with cooking, tells her that she can dig into the leftover pork with miso from yesterday. Practically over the moon, Chua squeals while telling Ida how much she loves him. While having dinner at Ida's home, Chua notices Ida engrossed in a book and seizes the moment to chat. She raises a point wondering why he doesn't go for a private med school, something that might give him a break from his marathon study sessions. Ada casually reveals that although private med schools might be a breeze to get into, they also come with a hefty price tag. Later that night, Chua asks Ida about how he feels regarding Natsuko and Masuzu, a girl known for her beauty throughout the school. Disinterested as ever, Ida asks Shua how much she scored during the exams. Satisfied with the answer, Chua announces that she's going to turn into a total babe this summer. The next morning, while getting ready to head to school, Ada gives a second glance to the reminder hanging on his wall. A bold declaration that he absolutely won't fall in love, seeing it as a waste of his valuable time. He adds another mental note to always make it clear that he is not batting for another teen either. When Chua shows up at his doorstep, they make their way to school. Along the way, Chua throws a question at Ada, asking him what he thinks about her hair clips. Staying true to his usual unresponsive self, Ada just shrugs it off. But Chua, persistent as ever, doesn't let the matter rest. She reveals that she read somewhere that accessories can really up a girl's popularity. With that piece of wisdom, she dashes in front of Ida to give him a better look. Ida finally gives in, telling her that she looks cute. When they finally get to school, Ida takes notice of the couples all around and turns to his friend Kaoru, raising a question about why everyone seems to be in love. Kaoru's smile turns a bit nervous, and he explains that being in love is more common than being anti-love like he is. Curiosity peak, Kaoru then shifts the conversation and inquires about Ida's parents. Ida responds in an unexpectedly harsh tone, revealing that he doesn't consider his parents anything more than losers. Kaoru, taken aback, advises Ida to not use such strong words, but Ida stands firm and asserts that they truly are losers, having abandoned their own child to chase after their own lovers separately. Things take a twist for Ida when their homeroom teacher assigns his seat next to the school's princess, Masuju. The class expresses their jealousy, which makes Ida think about how the seat is a bad omen as he just wants to study quietly and get into the top medical school since it's the only way to pay back his relative. Kiryu Seiko, who generously took him in after his own parents abandoned him. Time keeps moving forward and Ada carries on with his routine, not paying any attention to Masuzu. Then, out of the blue, Masuzu smiles and requests that Ida walk home with her. Upon hearing that, the whole class is caught off guard just like Ida himself. Instead of being flattered, Ida responds with anger, demanding to know if Masuzu lost some sort of bet. Undeterred by his reaction, Masuzu maintains her smile and makes a bold declaration, repeating that she really likes him. Unfazed by everyone's astonishment, Masuzu once again asks Ida to walk with her. Alone together, Ada confronts Masuzu with frustration, questioning why she would lie in front of everyone. Masuzu initially playfully brushes it off, but soon her demeanor changes. She coldly admits that her confession was a sham and Ida is indeed different from other guys, just as she thought. Masuzu goes on to reveal that since her transfer from overseas, she has been asked out of hopping 58 times in just two months and her every action or inaction has become a source for rumors which has taken a toll on her. Upon hearing that, Ida suggests she simply go out with one of the guys who asked her. But Masuzu explains that she can't pretend to be in love as she finds the whole concept bothersome and foolish. Ida's eyes widen in surprise upon realizing that Masuzu shares his disdain for love. Despite her reasoning, Ida initially turns her down. However, Masuzu doesn't give up easily. She wicks out a notebook and starts reading from it. A shock sets in for Ida as he realizes she's reading entries from his diary. Stunned, he asks where she found it and Masuzu reveals it was tucked inside an encyclopedia that she picked up at a bookstore. Reflecting on his past decision, Ada curses himself for hiding his diary there. Soon, the blackmailing begins as Masuzu devilishly says that she has saved everything in her PC and won't hesitate to air out his dirty laundry. Feeling defeated, Ada sinks to his knees and eventually agrees to be her fake boyfriend. As Masuzu loops her arm through Ada's, Shua comes rushing towards them, calling out their public display of affection as improper. Taken aback by Chua's reaction, Masuzu turns to Ada for an explanation. 
But before he can get a word in, Chuma boldly announces herself as Ida's childhood friend and asserts her right to know the details of their relationship. With a cold tone, Masuzu questions whether Chuma believes she needs her permission to date Ida. Unfazed by Masuzu's remarks, Chuma begins narrating various events from Ida's life, aiming to establish her place in Ida's life. In response, Masuzu calmly and elegantly suggests that Chuma should give her blessings as she will be dating Ida. With that, she grabs Ida's hand and walks away, leaving Chua stunned and angry. Later on, Chua angrily tells Ida that she is going to find an amazing boyfriend and become the most popular girl he has ever seen. The next day, Kaoru remarks how he always presented himself as anti-love and now he has the school's hottest girl on his arm. Unbothered, Ida continues on with his lunch as Kaoru informs him that everyone in school is talking about him. Upon hearing that, Ida finally realizes how Masuzu must have been feeling with everyone continuously talking about her. Kaoru then asks Ida about Chua's latest antics of saying meow after every sentence. Knowing this one of Chua's latest tactics of climbing the social ladder, Ida sighs in hopelessness. While walking home with Masuzu, Ida tries to broach the subject of Chaiwa, however, before he could reveal the matter, Masuzu shuts him down by saying that she already knows that he wants to tell Chua the truth about their relationship, but she won't allow him to do so. Ida tries to protest by saying that Chua will definitely keep their secret. Masuzu instantly tells him no one reasons with Ida that the moment he shares their secret with someone, he won't be able to work as her shield. Understanding Masuzu's reason, Ada apologizes to her. The two then talk about Chua's odd behavior. Upon learning that Chua wants to become popular, Masuzu smiles and tells Ida to bring Chaiwa to her place tomorrow. Initially confused, Ida decides to just let Masuzu cook up a plan. The next day, Ida takes Chua to Masuzu's tea club. Dressed in a traditional robe, Masuzu welcomes them both. Without playing around the subject, Masuzu asks Chua that she knows about her recent troubles. Flustered by the remark, Chua rudely asks why she cares. While maintaining her elegance, Masuzu casually says that as they know it, she is the most popular girl. In fact, she is so popular that she has gotten bored with it. Masuzu continues by saying that she wasn't always popular. In fact, it took her trial and error to get where she is. Eager to know the secret to popularity, Chua asks Masuzu to go on. Masuzu then presents Ida's diary and states that it belonged to her first love and she learned a great deal about the opposite sex from it. Being an exceptionally well actor, Masuzu brings tears to her eyes and says to Chua that she should allow her to help her gain popularity. At first, Chua maintains her guard up, but Masuzu manages to lure her in by saying that if she doesn't join the club, then she'll be working with Ida all alone. Chua instantly falls for the bait and agrees to join the club. The following day, Masuzu engages Chua in a conversation, explaining that to become more popular, she needs to have a guy as her focus. After pondering for a bit, Chua confesses that she finds Takuya Sakagami from the upper class pretty cool. Upon hearing her preference, Masuzu offers a tip. She suggests Chua start carrying a guitar as it's a surefire way to up her popularity. To support her argument, she amusingly begins reading from Ada's diary, causing him to practically cringe with embarrassment. After handing Chua an empty guitar case, Masuzu tells her to just pretend that she's carrying a guitar inside. Following Masuzu's advice, Chua carries an empty guitar case to school the next day. Almost instantly, Chua finds herself surrounded by girls, asking whether she's a street performer and who she listens to. Despite being a bundle of nerves, Chua tries to answer their questions. Soon, Sakagami's brother walks over to the group and states that his brother owns a lot of guitars and Chua should play a tune for them. The girls join in on the request, backing Chua into a corner. Throughout the entire time, Masuzu pretends that she has nothing to do with Chua. On the other hand, Chua gives into pressure and makes a joke out of herself by swinging the guitar case like an original guitar. Stunned by her actions, the group stares at her in utter shock, causing her to flee from the scene. Ida looks over at Masuzu and finds her laughing. In that moment, Ida realizes that he has never encountered someone as cruel as her. After some time, Ida and Masuzu find Chua calmly sipping tea in the club room. While conversing with each other, Chua asks how Masuzu and Ida began dating. Playful as ever, Masuzu says that Ida saw her panties, leaving her no choice but to offer herself. After saying that, she teases Ida by hiking up her skirt. Flustered by the whole situation, Chua excuses herself, leaving Masuzu and Ida to talk. Irritated by Masuzu's behavior, Ida asks her why she's doing all of this. Masuzu then reveals that after Chua made a fool out of herself, she thought Chua would quit the club. Upon hearing that, Ida smiles and tells her that some time ago, Chua got into an accident and injured her hip bone. Prior to her injuries, she had a goal to partake in the kendo club, but after losing that, Chua found herself a new goal of becoming popular, and that's why she won't ever quit the club. After hearing Chua's story, Masuzu seductively pushes her body closer to Ida and states that she won't tolerate him getting close to any other girl as he now belongs to her. Eager to stir up some mischief, Masuzu dives into reading Ida's diary. 
where he had conjured a heroic alter ego named Burning Fighting Fighter who valiantly fought against the tyrannical wyverns. After playfully teasing Eida enough, Masuzu suggests that they should confront enemies from their past lives. She turns her attention to Chua, asking her to unveil her own past life. After a thoughtful moment, Chua confesses that she was a beloved princess, adored by the masses. In her tale, a prince on a white horse proposed to her, offering her a life of feasting on expensive meat every day. At this point, Ida's patience runs thin. He stands up, his voice charged with fervor and asserts that they shouldn't trivialize the concept of past lives. He urges them to incorporate conflict, drama, and excitement, something that mirror the real world. After ending his impassioned speech, Ida finds his audience too stunned to speak. Realizing his outburst, Ida stammers trying to save face, but Masuzu intervenes and agrees with Ida's sentiment, stating that drama should indeed be a part of their past life imaginings. Turning to Chiwa, she declares her intention to pen an action-packed script for her to enact. Chiwa innocently asks Masuzu whether this will help her gain popularity and like always, Masuzu assures her that her lover's diary is never wrong. As planned, Chiwa enters the classroom and plays the role of a hero that has just gained the power and memories of her past life. To make the scene more intense, Ida rises up to the task by helping her act out her role. After making a dramatic entrance, Chiwa makes the same dramatic exit. The entire class instantly lauds Ida for the performance and wonder if he'll be performing the comedic skit on stage. Upon hearing that, Masuzu falls to her knees, agonizing over how people took her serious skit as a comic relief. Later in the club room, Masuzu reveals that the time has come for Chaiwa to ask out their senpai. Stunned, Chua asks if it's the right time to do so. Masuzu proudly says that after her recent stunts, she is sure that Takuya will easily fall into her lap. When Eda tries to reason with Masuzu by saying that it's still a bit too early, Chaiwa pipes up by saying that she'll ask Takuya out. Taking Mim of Chua's response, Masuzu remarks that it's almost like she wants Takuya to reject her. Flustered, Chua denies such claims and states that she'll use the traditional method of putting love letter in Takuya's locker to confess her feelings. During grocery shopping, Ida asks Chua if she's really okay with enacting her plan. Chua assures him that she knows what is doing. Satisfied by her answer, Ida smiles and says that if she's successful in her pursuits, then they will hold a celebration. As she sees Ida unfazed by the whole situation, Chua smiles sadly. The next day, Chua places the letter in Takuya's locker and waits for him on the rooftop with Ida and Masuzu watching her every move like a hawk. To everyone's surprise, Takuya approaches Chua with a gentle smile and admits that he always found her cute. After saying that, Takuya makes plans for movies on the weekend with her. Despite her success, Chua doesn't respond with her usual enthusiasm. While walking home together, Masuzu proudly says that her lover's diary proved to be right once again. Joining in, Shiwa agrees that whoever wrote in the diary is pretty amazing for not hesitating to pen down his fantasies. Hearing this, Ida thinks about how his diary is nothing but a stain on his life. At Ida's place, Shiwa is welcome to a lavish meal, however, she only looks at the celebratory feast with gloomy eyes. Unable to bear the pain any longer, Chaiwa questions Ida if he's truly okay with her being with Takuya. Confused, Ida says that the whole purpose of the club was to help her gain popularity, and that's why they all work hard. In a fit of emotional rage, Chua tearfully says that she wished she never knew Ida, as it hasn't gotten her anywhere. Surprised by her outburst, Ida states that they have known each other since first grade and are practically like family. Further disheartened, Chua tearfully runs away. Alone, Ina thinks about the time when he was in middle school. The limping Chua greets him in his house and learns from him that his parents recently found new partners and abandoned him. Despite the unfortunate circumstances, Ida declares that he'll learn how to cook and one day treat her to a delicious meal. As Ida learns that Chua can no longer pursue her career in kendo, he makes up his mind to become a doctor who'll treat Chua. Despite being a bad student, Ida asserts that he'll become the top-ranking student. After waking up, Ida rushes to the cinema where he bumps into Masuzu. He inquires if she's also there to check up on Chua and her date. With the same smile plastered on her face, Masuzu links her hand with Ida and states that she's there as the president of the club. From afar, Ida and Masuzu watch Chua intently as she waits for Takuya for the date. Ida remarks that Chua sure is dressed up for the date and Masuzu reveals that it was her handiwork. When Ada tells her that she can be nice sometimes, Masuzu reveals that she passed on her clothes from sixth grade, making Ida regret his previous statement. As time goes on, Ada points out how Takuya should have arrived early for the date. After what seems like eternity, Takuya arrives with his group. He laughs mockingly and tells Chua that it was all a prank and a bet for him. The girls in his group join in by mocking her that a guy like Takuya would never go for someone like her. In the meantime, Ida's blood boils with anger. Masuzu reveals that she had always known Takuya as a two-timing douchebag which further enrages Ada. As he turns to leave, Masuzu holds him back by saying that she only did this to make Chua see how pointless love is. Remembering how hopeless and sad Chua looked when she couldn't do kendo anymore, Ada berates Masuzu for lying to Chua. 
However, without breaking her cold demeanor, Masuzu says that he has always known how evil she is. Ida objects and tries to shake sense into her by saying that he sees through her act and just because they feel hopeless, she shouldn't try to rob others of hope. As Ida tries to leave, Masuzu holds him by the cuff again and says that she doesn't want to be alone anymore. Ida playfully flicks her head and tells Masuzu to watch how her boyfriend saves the day. While watching him go, Masuzu's face darkens and she thinks about how Ida doesn't have the slightest clue. On the other hand, Ida charges towards the group while imagining himself as his alter ego burning fighting fighter. With crazy hand gestures, Ida manages to weird out Takuya's group. However, just as they turn their backs on him, Ida lunges at Takuya, asking him to apologize to Chiwa for leading her on. Rattled by Ida's boldness, Takuya and his friends give him a good beating. Despite taking hard hits, Ida rises up and cryptically says she is watching. All of a sudden, a kendo stick flies and drops at Chiwa's feet. She picks it up and easily beats Takuya and his friends. After overpowering them, Chiwa bows down and apologizes for lying to Takuya. She says that she never really liked him and that they should forget about this entire ordeal. Agreeing with her, Takuya quickly leaves with his group. Chiwa quickly comes to check up on Ida, and the two instantly make up, forgetting that they never fought. Unbeknownst to them, a mysterious girl watches them from afar. The next day at school, everyone learns about Takuya's true nature. Kaoru informs Ida that everyone knows about the stunt he pulled while defending Chiwa. The two then look at the empty seat and Kaoru points out how Masuzu must have been upset with him for acting like a knight in shining armor for another girl, leaving her stranded. After school, Ida decides to check up on Masuzu and he realizes that she lives in opposite directions to him and has been walking him home throughout the entire time. All of a sudden, Masuzu hugs him from behind, announcing that it's a punishment hug. As the two begin walking, Ida learns that Masuzu still wishes to run the club. He reminds her of their conversation, which only makes Masuzu pout. Caving in, Ida agrees to keep the club running. Masuzu spins around and gives Ida an unexpected kiss on the lips. She smiles and tells him to remember that his first kiss was with her but not Chua. Stunned, Ida remarks how she's as bold as ever and to his dismay, Masuzu states that this was all a parody of a scene from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. The next morning, Ida discovers Chua in his bathroom. Quickly editing the space, Ida asks what she's doing. Chua reveals that she emailed him about how her shower broke. Simultaneously, he finds Masuzu in his kitchen who states that she too emailed him about how she's going to be cooking for him. Trying to keep the two women apart from each other, Ida juggles between the two. However, his efforts go in vain as the girls eventually discover each other. As Masuzu and Chua stare at each other intently, Ida realizes that the scene looks like something out of a battleground. Ida receives an anonymous love letter where the sender tells him that she has liked him for a long time and wishes to rekindle their long lost connection. Confused by the letter, Ida takes it to Karu who tells him that it could be from Chua. With that thought swirling his head, Ida makes his way over to the club room where Chua instantly asks him where Masuzu is. Ida mumbles that she's busy with something. Chua uses this opportunity to rest her head against Ada, stating that she's just practicing how it would feel to have a boyfriend once she's all popular. All of a sudden, Masuzu slams Chua's head on the desk without changing her countenance. After playfully quarreling with Chua, Masuzu states their new agenda of taking down the troublesome hall monitors. Chua makes a suggestion of gaining more club members for the club which earns her a backhanded compliment from Masuzu. She then announces that since music has the power to heal the world, they should create a theme song for the club. Chua enthusiastically rises up to the task, stating that she has just come up with a theme song called My Connection With You Is Like A Dog Barking. While performing the song, Masuzu cuts off Chua in the middle, stating that instead of having love on her mind, she should focus on the perils of humanity. Upon saying that, Masuzu uses Ida's diary to sing his poem, Rotten World. Of course, Ida's entire soul begins to shudder after hearing his private thoughts out loud by Masuzu. The following day, Ida discovers another love letter in his shoe locker. Before getting a chance to register it, Masuzu walks up to her, causing him to hide the letter. However, nothing misses Masuzu's eyes and she instantly asks Ida what he's hiding. When Ida refuses to tell her, Masuzu tries to blackmail him with his diary. Still, Ida remains adamant in his original stance. All of a sudden, a blonde-haired girl appears on the scene. Seeing her, Masuzu's entire demeanor changes. With a smirk plastered on her face, the girl begins telling Masuzu that their parents are disappointed in her as they didn't send her to Japan for dating. Soon enough, Ida learns that the girl is Mana Naksakawa, Masuzu's younger sister. Mana assures Masuzu that she'll put in a good word for her but then wants her boyfriend in return. Without hesitating, Mana lunges to kiss Ida and drives off. As Ida turns to ask Masuzu about Mana, Masuzu angrily shouts at him, telling him that she doesn't trust him enough to share her life story with him. The next day, Masuzu sits beside the pool with her towel covering her up. Ida comes to ask her whether she'll swim or not and learns that Masuzu hates swimming. A group of girls walk past her, laughing and wondering whether she's covering herself for attention. Irked by the comment, Masuzu drops the towel, aiming to take a swim. The boys begin cheering, but soon the crowd goes silent as Masuzu ends up drowning. Luckily, Ada jumps to her rescue, giving her CPR. 
Masuzu soon wakes up in the infirmary and apologizes for her behavior. Aida assures her that the kiss Mana gave him means nothing and tells Masuzu to forget about it. Smiling, she agrees to forget about it all. Aida later learns that Shu has fallen ill and goes to look after her. In her room, Aida finds chopsticks from their meal together. Chiwa reveals that they're a keepsake of a time together. At that moment, he realizes that the letters aren't sent by Chiwa. The next day, Aida finds another letter, this time requesting for a meet-up on the rooftop. As Aida goes on the rooftop, he finds a girl who reveals her name as Himika Akishino. She confesses that they were close in the previous life where she was known as Burning Pudding Princess. As Himika goes in for a hug, Aida freaks out and asks her how she knows about Burning Fighting Fighter. Before getting a chance to explain things, Chaiwa and Masuzu walk in on them hugging each other. As the girls angrily approach him, Aida whispers to Himika, instructing her to keep hush about her title as his lover in their past life. So once the girls ask Himika who she is, she reveals herself as Aida's ex-girlfriend. Baffled by the confession, Chiwa angrily asks Aida if he truly dated someone behind her back. Meanwhile, Masuzu begins noting down the details of Aida's life in her diary. When Himika learns that Chiwa is his childhood friend and Masuzu is his current girlfriend, she freaks out and loudly tells that she's the only one who can hug Aida. Taking his concerns to Karu, Aida asks him about Himika and learns that her family owns Akishino bed and breakfast and Himika is known as a shy, timid girl. Later in the club room, Aida sees a shocking sight of Himika and Masuzu drinking tea together. Upon confronting Masuzu, Aida finds out that Himika has told Masuzu that when he was fighting Takuya as Burning Fighting Fighter, that's when she regained her memories as Burning Pudding Princess. Masuzu then reveals that she's planning on including Himbika in the club. Her proposition is met with swift opposition from Chiwa, who states that Himbika is only interested in Aida. In reply, Masuzu coldly says that Himika is in the same boat as hers then. When Chiwa asks Himiko whether she's interested in becoming popular, she latches herself on Aida's arms and confesses that she's only interested in Aida. Masuzu at once brings Aida's diary to play, stating that she must have a desire to attract the opposite sex. To back her claims, she reads about Aida's type of women disguised as characters of his fantasy world. While the girls listen to Masuzu intently, Aida loses his brain cells out of sheer embarrassment. After reading the diary, Masuzu reveals that if Himiko wants to join the club, she must tell them what kind of maiden she wants to become in a form of poetry. She rejoins in, stating that she will also need a practical test. However, their plans end up getting compromised when the hall monitors arrive and capture Chaiwa and Masuzu. Left alone with Himika, Aida asks her why she cares about him since it's not like he's her boyfriend in their current life. She reveals that she had a small hope to change the world, but as she entered middle school and then high school, she became mundane and gray like the others. However, he was different. Himika compliments Aida on his bravery and coolness, causing him to blush. After digesting the kind words, Aida remarks that he outgrew his fantasy life as burning fighting fighter in middle school. Himika objects and tells him to believe that he is still a valiant warrior that can shatter the gray world. On their off day, Masuzu, Chaiwa, and Aida find themselves scrubbing and cleaning the pool when all of a sudden, Mana appears on the scene. She tells Masuzu that their father has asked her to pack her things up as she is to return to Sweden at once. Hearing that, Masuzu coldly tells Aida that she doesn't like him anymore and Chiwa can have him. With that, Masuzu storms off, causing Chiwa to run after her. In the meantime, Himbika arrives with her poetry, but Mana quickly takes the journal from her hand. As she begins mocking Himbika, causing her to well up, Ida curses at her and tells Mana that everyone has fantasies and she has no right to insult others. Soon, Misuzu appears on the scene and tells Mana off. In the meantime, Ada asks Himika to express how she feels and upon doing so, she manages to convince Misuzu to stay. Using her authority as the older sister, Misuzu makes Mana apologize to Himika. Mana begrudgingly apologizes to Himika, but tells Misuzu that she'll regret defying their father's orders. Later on, Misuzu approves Himika to join the club. Waking up, Ida finds himself beside a naked Himika. When he tries to ask why she's naked, Himbika begins rambling about the fantasy world. All of a sudden, Masuzu and Shua start banging on the door, asking to be let in. Scared out of his wits, Aida asks Himka to do something. In response, Himbika opens the door to let the girls in. Cursing Himbika, Aida hides behind the curtains. Just as Masuzu is about to catch him, Fuyumi A from the hallway monitoring committee approaches them. She yells at them to instantly disband the club. With a smug face, Shua asks that she's perhaps so riled up because she wants to join the club and become popular. She continues to torment Ai by saying that it's impossible for her to get a boyfriend as an uptight monitor. Out of embarrassment, Ai yells that she totally has a boyfriend. When Masuzu asks her about the said boyfriend, Ai states that her boyfriend goes to a prestigious college in Tokyo and is the son of a CDO. The next day, Ai shuts down the club which Ida finds in his favor as he will be attending his summer classes. To his surprise, Ida finds Ai in the academy. Just as surprised as Ida, Ai asks him what he's doing. Ada reveals that he's here to study, making her question his class. 
When Ada reveals he's in class Z, I squeals in excitement but quickly contains herself and states that he's in the same class as her. Putting two and two together, Ida realizes that I is also aiming for the top tier schools. As I reveals her plans, she quickly stops herself and says that she doesn't want to catch his germs and walks away. During class, Ida learns that Kaoru and I are friends. Later that day, Chua expresses her dislike for Ai as she sent her to the teacher's office. She then asks Ida if he has been asked out by someone other than Masuzu. After giving it some thought, he reveals that during kindergarten he received a proposal. Later, while studying, Ida receives a text from Masuzu who asks him to come to a nearby cafe. Upon rushing to the cafe, Masuzu asks Ida to find A's weakness so she can get the club back. She further tells Ida that she learned from A's classmates that she only brings up her boyfriend when she's quarreling with her enemies. On that note, Masuzu asks Ida to find evidence that A's boyfriend is a fiction. The next day, Kaoru forces Ida to talk to Ida or he'll stop helping her out. Despite being a blushing mess, I takes out the bento and asks Ida to help himself. Upon trying out the bento, Ida immediately compliments her cooking, causing Ida to run off in embarrassment. The next day, Kaoru forces Ida to hang out with Ida and Chua, suggesting that this might be her chance. In Chua's absence, Ai tries to reveal the truth about her boyfriend, but Chua magically pops out and talks over Ai, accusing her of lying. Irked out, Ai lies that she and her boyfriend are very much in love. Himika joins in and asks Ai about her boyfriend, causing her to make up a bunch of stories about Michael, her fake boyfriend. Later, I asked Ida how he felt when she talked about her boyfriend. As Ida fails to answer the question, I asked him to forget about it. Agreeing to do so, Ida tells her that he'll see her tomorrow, which makes A smile. Sitting down with Masuzu, Ida informs her that A definitely has a boyfriend, as she talked about what Michael likes and how they began dating. However, Masuzu still remains adamant that Ai is lying. Upon expressing her feelings regarding Ai, Ida scolds her for not believing him in Ai. Masuzu apologizes to Ida and says that since she lived her own life as a faker, it's hard for her to believe others. Ida objects and tells her that if that was true, she wouldn't have believed in Himika and Chua. A smile flutters on Masuzu's lips, and she gets up to kiss Ida on the lips. After spending some time with Kaoru and Ai, Ida returns home and gets questioned by Chua who asks her whether he's still spying on Ai from Masuzu. Ida reveals that while he's not keeping tabs on Ai, it would be nice to find her weakness as they'll be able to get the club back. When he doesn't hear Chua back, Ada goes to check up on her and finds her deeply engrossed with a magazine. Upon asking her what she's reading, Chua shows in how the magazine gives readers tips on getting their crush. Intrigued, Ida reads out loud from the magazine stating that if you give your favorite food to your friend and say the magical words, your crush will soon become your lover instead. The next day, Ida finds Ai staring at him and chanting something happily. Upon meeting her later, I asked Ida whether he'll be going out to see the fireworks with the girls. When he reveals that he turned them down, I stands up and begins celebrating. She then asks Ida who he's taking to the fireworks. To her dismay, I learns that the reason why he turned the girls down was because of studies. Seeing I hurt, Kaoru invites Ida to watch a movie with them tomorrow. Once Ida reveals the plan to Himbika, Chaiwa, and Masuzu, Masuzu tells him to lure Ai by going on a date with her. She tells them that if Ai does have a boyfriend then it'll practically be like cheating, and if she doesn't then either way they can blackmail her. Masuzu then tells Chua to accompany Ida while she will snap pics of them. The next day, the group makes their way towards the cinema when Ai asks Ida if he remembers something from kindergarten. When he fails to remember, Ai looks down glumly. During the movie, Ai and Chua find characters representing them causing them to headbutt against each other. Masuzu, who happens to be spying on them, starts cursing Ada directly. As Ai finds the character reflecting her pain, she begins to tear up. After the movie, she assures Ida that it was nothing and she shouldn't worry. As Ada gathers his belongings, he spots a notebook that grabs his attention. Just as he picks it up to take a closer look, A hurriedly rushes over, attempting to retrieve the notebook from his grasp. In her haste, however, she accidentally jostles his bag, causing the contents to spill out. Amid the commotion, I unwittingly ends up swapping notebooks with Ida. After grabbing the wrong notebook, I dashes out leaving Ida alone with her original notebook. As he goes through it, Ida finds out that I is just as delusional as he is. Once I realizes that she has made a grave mistake, she chases after Ida to get her notebook which leads them to fall in on each other. In an agonizing tone, A begs for death and asks Ida to just laugh at her for being so delusional. Seeing Ai cry, Ada stands up and confesses that he is just as delusional as her. After that revelation, he dons the mantle of burning fighting fighter to put Ai out of her misery. Seeing Ada make fighting sounds and throw punches in the air, Ai begins to laugh. She rises up and instantly goes in for a hug. Surprised by her actions, Ada looks at her stunned. After collecting herself, Ai steps back and asks Ida to return the notebook. Noticing the notebook all scrunched up, Ai pouts and says that he must make up for ruining her notebook. On the day of the firework festival, Ada wearing a suspicious cap waits for Ai who shows up seconds later, dressed in a beautiful yukata. 
However, instead of taking Ida to the firework festival, Ida brings him to the countryside where Ida begins having flashbacks of old memories. Suddenly recalling a favorite old spot, Ida's excitement gets the best of him, causing him to grab A's hands eagerly, leading her to the spot where they enjoy the mesmerizing sight of fireworks. With a slight smile, I reveals that they were in the same kindergarten class, and she used to call him Takin. Caught off guard, Ida suddenly realizes that I is A-chan from his past. Upon remembering everything, A welcomes her old friend. She begins telling him that Kaoru even used the same nickname to jog up his memory, but it was to no avail. Moreover, I tells Ida that after moving away in kindergarten, she had no way of contacting him but upon her return, she instantly noticed him in school. Things take an unexpected shift for Ida when I presents a piece of paper to him. On it, she reveals a promise he made to her, a commitment to get married after a span of 10 years. As I begins pestering him, Ida reminds her that she still has a boyfriend. Appalled by the revelation, Ida exclaims that he trusted Ai when she made up all the lies about Michael. I fires back by telling him that she loved him throughout the entire time while he forgot about her existence. The continuous back forth leads to a game of chase. While running from Ai, Ida stumbles upon Himika and Chua who drag him away. The following day, Masuzu calls Ada and firmly orders him to make it up to her for being with Ai by kissing her. After Ada kisses her cheek, Ai enters revealing to everyone that she will allow the club to operate as she'll be joining in as a coach and chaperone. As Ai takes over the club, Chua finds herself constantly clashing with her. Meanwhile, Haim easily submits to Ai in hopes of making Ada fall for her. As for Masuzu, she gives Ai backhanded compliments, pointing out how she believes that Ai is a better coach than her since she has a rich, handsome boyfriend. As the new coach, Ai states that a girl should never confess, instead, they should make the guy confess first. Agreeing with Ai, Masuzu asks her to demonstrate the scene with Ida for the rest of them. Blushing, Ai agrees that she's only doing it for the club. At first, Ada expresses his reluctance, but once Masuzu shows him the notebook, Ida obediently does his best to act his part. Ai caves in and agrees to go out with him, stating that she has won in this battle. The girls stare at the once uptight monitor with astonishment as she announces that she wants three kids after college. Ai then removes herself from Ida and says that she's done pretending. Once Chua and Ai find themselves quarreling again, Ai reveals that she met Ida first. Himpa chimes in that in reality, she met Ida first as they were lovers in past life. As the club begins to fall apart, Masuzu brings their attention towards important matters at hand, such as taking a trip to the beach. While they begin preparing for the trip, Chua excuses herself to use the bathroom. Inside, she tries to practice her smiling face after hearing about Ai being Ida's friend. To her surprise, Chua finds Ida waiting in the hallway. When he asks her why she's so upset, Chua lies and says it's nothing but Ada. Being quick to catch on tells her that it doesn't matter which friend came first. Relieved to hear that, Chua gives Ida a big hug and asks him to accompany her for shopping tomorrow. Later on, when Ida asks Masuzu if she's okay with him hanging out with Chua, Masuzu easily tells him to go if he pleases. She then remarks how he's always surrounded by childhood friends and past lovers these days. Continuing on, Masuzu tells Ida that while she's his fake girlfriend, she can't win against time. The following day, Ida greets Chua for shopping when Masuzu makes a surprise appearance. On the other hand, Ai angrily punches the wall, calling Ida an adulterer upon seeing him with Chua and Masuzu. A whole new battle breaks out in a shopping mall as the girls fight for Ida's attention. Fed up by the constant yells, Ida says that he'll give them time individually. Acting according to the plan, Ida has a good time with them all. Ida's cousin, Seiko catches him with Masuzu and the girls. When Ida tries to insist that he's actually together with Masuzu, Seiko falls down in fatigue, stating that she's hungry. As the group makes it back to Ida's place, Seiko instantly falls asleep after having dinner. With Seiko out of the way, Masuzu brings their attention to the subject of getting money for the trip. As they try to find ways, Seiko gets up from her power nap and states that money won't be a problem if they compete in an event that's sponsoring a game. She goes on to reveal that she works with a gaming company that creates Otone games and since she has observed their love for Ida, they should participate in it. Masuzu gets up and asks Seko why she's excluding her when she's Ida's girlfriend. With a smirk, Seko reveals that her intuition is telling her that she's just in a fake relationship with Ada. Adam in her stance, Masuzu insists that she is the real deal. In response, Seiko asks Masuzu to participate in a game which will reveal how much she loves Ida. As the girls are asked about a hypothetical situation, they all give answers according to how much they know Ida. Seiko evaluates the results and reveals that Masuzu appeared last because her answer was too perfect to be true. Enraged by Seiko's reasoning, Masuzu begins to complain. Seiko counters back, stating that she'll acknowledge her status as the girlfriend after she participates in the event. Later that night, Seiko asks Ida if he wants to turn his life into a battleground then he must learn self-defense, and if he wants a harem then he should know how to manage all the girls or he'll find himself in trouble. Ida announces that he doesn't want either of it. Seiko tells him to pick one girl if he doesn't want a battleground or a harem which makes Ida insist once again that he's dating Masuzu. He tries hard to convince Seiko, but being the sharp lady, she advises him to be careful. 
Later on, Ida meets up with Masuzu and finds her sipping on juice. He tries to tell her how unhealthy it is to miss dinner, but Masuzu curtly states that she doesn't understand why everyone likes a bookworm like him that's always constantly preaching. Hurt by the remark, Ida asks Masuzu whether she thinks like that of him. Masuzu changes the subject and asks him how his aunt is like. Ida informs her that Seiko is like a child in an adult's body. The following night, Ida observes how Ai, Himeka, and Chua have gotten closer, only leaving Masuzu alone. On the day of the trip, Masuzu grabs Ida's arm, making the girls envious. Determined to prove their skills, Ida and Masuzu put on their best act during a bus ride. Every time Ada says something cheesy, I, Himeka, and Chaiwa remark on the awkwardness between Ida and Masuzu. Upon finally reaching the resort, Himeka beholds the sight of ocean. Stunned by its beauty, she asks Shua if it's scary. Chua enthusiastically assures her that it's not scary at all as they jump inside the ocean. Meanwhile, Masuzu notes how everyone is totally unpopular. Ida retorts back asking whether she thinks she's popular. In response, Masuzu brings his attention towards the crowd of boys gawking at her. Irritated, Ida gets up and puts a sheet on her, which makes Masuzu ask why he's acting like someone who has love on their mind. Ida pouts and says that she was the one who wanted to act like couples. Later on, Masuzu blindfolds Ida and instructs him to grab the watermelon for them. The girls begin to direct him towards the watermelon, but Masuzu asks Ida to follow her voice. Despite everyone's warnings, Ida asserts that he's going to follow his girlfriend's voice. Soon enough, he finds himself embracing Masuzu instead of getting the watermelon. As always, Chiwa and the girls express their envy and punish Ida by riding Shameless on his back. Back at the resort, Chaiwa and Himbika head out to grab groceries, leaving Ida to tinker with the light bulbs. With just Ida and Masuzu around, I start to chat by asking if guys still hit on her. Masuzu tells her it doesn't happen anymore. I then spills about this one time when she saw a guy confessing to Masuzu, and when he got turned down, he flipped out and started yelling. I adds that she'd probably start hating confessions too if she had to deal with that. Feeling the gravity of the situation, I chips in, admitting that if she figure out she's with Ida just for the sake of safety, she might not be able to forgive her. Later on, Masuzu strategizes with Ida that they must do something that'll make the girls believe they are together for real. She then tells Ida to casually come up to her and feed her with a kiss. Shocked by the suggestion, Ida asks if she would be truly okay with doing that. Masuzu states that a kiss means absolutely nothing to the anti-love types, but girls with love on their brain are a different story. Noticing Ida's reluctance, Masuzu tells him that she won't force him to kiss her this one time. As the group engages in a game of cards, Ida recalls how minutes ago Masuzu told him to give her a kiss. Just when Ida's about to act on the plan, Chiwa gives him and Masuzu a present with a keychain that represents their club. Chiwa and I reveal that since Masuzu founded the club, they wanted to give her a present. Later in her room, Ida apologizes for not kissing Masuzu, but to his surprise, she reveals that if he had kissed her, then she would have hated him. Masuzu goes on to express how despite considering her as a rival, the girls got her a present which reminded her of her ugliness. She gets up and shows Ida the notebook entry where he vowed to become a doctor to heal Chua. Masuzu smiles and says that after the trip, she will let him go. The next day, Ida runs into Mana and the two get to talking after an initial brawl. Mana reveals that Masuzu was known as the jewel of the family as their father showed her off to everyone and even separated her from their mother until she finally went crazy and forgot her identity. Ida asks Mana what kind of person would be able to stick with a girl like Masuzu. Smirking, Mana reveals that only her partner in crime can tolerate a liar like Masuzu. With the event slash contest starting, Ida hurries and finds Chua on the stage. When Seiko asks her about the guy she likes, Chua describes Ida as too freaking serious but elaborates that because he's too serious, she can't leave him on his own. After Chiwa, Seiko announces Himika's name who ends up getting a strange fright. She appears behind Ida, stating that she can't go up on the stage. Ida assures her and tells Himika that she's part of the club when all of a sudden Ai appears on the screen, telling Himika that if she doesn't step up now, then all of her efforts will be in vain. Himika turns to Ida and asks him how she can stop feeling anxious. Ada tells her to use something she loves as a chant to overcome her anxiety. Taking his advice, Himika hugs him and tells Ida how much she loves him. After featuring the hub between Himika and Ada, Seiko asks Ida to come up and then eventually announces Masuzu's name. As she steps on the stage, the crowd begins to murmur about her beauty. However, Masuzu shocks the crowd by apologizing to everyone and confessing that she broke up with her boyfriend last night. As the crowd starts to badmouth her, Ida yells at Masuzu to keep pretending so they can start over once again. Shocked, Masuzu tells Ida that he should meet someone as fake as her when he has genuine people around him, to which Ida responds by saying that they're all too good for him and a total poser like her belongs to a bastard like him. With that, Ida confesses that he's in love with her and goes in for a kiss. The next day, Seiko advises Ida that if he wants to make it out of this mess alive, he should make everyone else hate him other than his girlfriend. Following her advice, Ida goes to tell Himbika that he was never the burning fighting fighter, but a commoner. 
Despite his intentions of keeping Himbika away, the girl ends up getting more excited to be with him. After this epic fail, Ada enters A's room with the intention of tearing the marriage contract apart, but accidentally ends up stamping on it, causing Ai to dance in excitement. Later, Ida comes to visit Chua, who cries while expressing how much she loves him and then suddenly kisses him. Masuzu joins the scene, and the two look at each other with challenging eyes. 